The following is approved for all audiences. Cruise is filmed on location with the men and women of the City of Atlanta Department of Watershed Management. All work orders are mandatory until completed. Watershed's men and women work hard to provide clean, safe drinking water for our customers. Uh, my name is Daryl Robinson and I'm the PM Shift Supervisor. Uh, I've been in the city now going on eight years or prior to environmental compliance management. I have over 25 years. I uh, came from corporate to the city and uh, I'm in charge of the PM Shift as well as the storm water runoff program for this plant. We come up now on the influent gate. That's where the uh, water comes in to headworks. Uh, these are the two influent gates that govern the flow into this facility, into our headworks, which is uh, the primary treatment, removing all the large solids that come in and after it leaves the, uh, come into Edwards, go to our bar screens and then to our drum screens. But right now we're looking at the influent gates to make sure that everything is working properly, properly. and they are. And this is what we do every day. We do uh, inspections of the entire four process areas of this facility. And the principles of wastewater are the following. Our precipitation, uh, we have uh, coagulation, flocculation, and then sedimentation. Those are the four principles for wastewater. And we have those processes here that we have to monitor 24-7. Regardless of climate conditions, we have to be on point because we have a large flow coming in at all times. Next, we're gonna go inside the Headworks building where our bar screens are moving the large uh, floatables, the large uh, debris that comes in uh, from the sewage lines. All right, we're going to head upstairs to the bar screens here to give you a good, good pictorial view of what we're doing and what bar screen and primary treatment is all about. Again, we're doing, right now we're doing approximately 80 MGD coming into the facility by way of the influent gate, uh, right into our primary treatment. This is the Head of Works building. We're gonna go and look at the bar screens that take out the large floatables. We have a total of four bar screens and they uh, collect, as you can see here, on the uh, conveyor and the uh, screw conveyor brings them down to the compactors and they're forced out down into a trailer. Uh, strictly automatic and it leaves here goes to the drum screens, still primary treatment, before it leaves to go to the primary clarifiers. Hello, How you doing there? Hi. Yes, sir. Uh, you got everything working great. The vet, the uh, ram factor is working. Uh, everything's working like it should. As you can see, the bar screens have stopped because the flow has dropped. Right. It's automatic. And, no, you took care of that, so that's a good thing. It's not leaking at all. So, as you can see, the flow has dropped because the bar screens are not moving. They are in the their automatic mode. It's based off of uh, depth, as you know, already know. So we're doing about between 70 and 80 MGD. Okay. They were saying that we didn't have enough water flow mm -hmm. to push this product down because mm -hmm. the guy let shut it off. Yeah. Is that still the problem? Or? No, we uh, we compromised and got a. Uh, the right water, volume we need, so we're happy. 
So right now we don't have to make any more jokes. No, you're so fine. Far. You're fine. Yeah. Doing good. Disposable wipes do not always mean flushable. Baby and cleaning wipes do not dissolve when flushed and can lead to millions of your dollars going to infrastructure repairs. Wipes and paper towels should always be placed in the trash for proper disposal. Hashtag no wipes and pipes. Hey, 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 Trap, we got some waste coming in here. Careful. Yeah. We got a little waste coming in. Yeah, the industrial waste, you know, you know how it is, you know, you don't want to work directly with it because of, uh, of its character, its nature. But it is working. Bar spoons work in, as you can see. But yeah, it is working great, and uh, we're happy about that. So, no issues, no maintenance issues whatsoever. Appreciate okay. that. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, we're walking. Yeah, and you see, screw conveyors picking up very well. Oh, yes. Hi, right, by the way, my name is Travis Adams. I've been with the city for 28 years and remain the supervisor. And this is the process that Gerald explained to you, but this is the mechanical process now. Says, so let me show you what we need to do. Part of the job. This is a nasty job, but somebody got to do it. Now, as we go down, we're going to go into the uh, screening room. We have four boxes sitting down in the screening room that all the trash that you saw coming from the screw conveyor that drops down. Now, let me show you this process also. Steve, come on, Steve. You know, we try to maintain the best we can. This is a chute, and this is where, where we were upstairs. And the screw conveyor drops it down. It drops into the box where it's hauled off by our trucking company, I mean, by our truck drivers. And this thing's filled up kind of quick, especially when we have a rain event. But it's a hard job. I mean, it's constantly have to keep the doors closed because of the odor. And it's just a hard process, but with all the wipes and all the buildup, it's a constant job, it's a constant struggle, but you know, we try to maintain the best we can. And this box, probably, this box was probably dumped earlier today. We have uh, one truck driver that's staffed. We need to get a couple more, but this is the way the process is. I mean, you need to see the stuff drop in, but it actually it drops down this chute from the screw conveyor, just where, right where we were at the uh, bar screen area. And say so this is, a, this is a, 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 a constant job. The operators have to come in every so often and rake the boxes down because sometimes we limit it with drivers and the boxes will overfill. We're going to walk over to the drum screen area right now. I got a couple of mechanics working on the drum screen. What they're doing is putting side shields, side shields on the side of the drum screen to keep them from coming back into the system. Come on and walk with me. Let me show you how this is, how it's done. Okay, we're walking over to the drum screen area. Like I said, I have a couple of mechanics over here putting the side shields on. And this is a simple process, but let me show you exactly what we got going on. It's a simple process, but you know, it's a hard job, but somebody has to do it. I say simple because I have a lot of experience, but it's not that simple for the average person. <laughs> I have a couple of mechanics working in the area. We're going over to check on them to see exactly how the process is coming. Now here we have three mechanics. I have Mr. Clarence Robinson, Wade Anderson, and Steve Crow. These are our head works mechanics. They do a great job for us. They're some of the best guys in the business. I mean, the, the best guys in the business. I'm not just saying it because they work for me, but they're just good guys. How you doing? My name's Wade Anderson. I've been with the city almost uh, 26 years now, ever since I was 18. Uh, these drum screen room, we're putting new shields on it, trying to keep debris out of it. And uh, what this does is it goes around, it drops down this trough and it goes around to the Maserator pit out there. And the Maserator chop it up and chews it up, takes it upstairs to the liquid separator, and that chops it up and spits it into the dumpster. Yeah, let me show you the drum that's running right now. Uh, the only reason they got this running going fast is because we had to shut this one off while this one's repaired. Anytime it storms, they had to cut all these drums on really fast like that because a lot of flow comes in the plant. 
But that's that's the way it runs right there, non-stop. It's got jetters in it. You gotta keep them jetters cleaned out for it to keep the screens clean. If not, that'll stop up and all. You don't want that, you know. But, well, you can see right here, debris up under there that stops the trough up right here. You can see that. It stopped up all the way to the top. That's why all these, this whole trough right here stopped up all the way to the Masbury pit. Um, it's, it's a lot of stuff. Constantly coming in there. And see, most of the time we had to keep that cleaned out. As you see that one there, we keep that cleaned out. You got to get a fire hose and blow it in there about once every two weeks maybe. Every time. See it? But it's, it runs non-stop 24 hours a day. And anytime it storms, like I said, they cut them on wide open just like this. But when two of them's running on a normal day like today, they run slow. But I don't reason because we had to repair that one. But I'm gonna give it back to them in a little bit, and they're gonna cut that one back on. No, no, you cut this one on normal, cut that one back on, cut that one on normal. Yeah, okay. But tomorrow I'm gonna get John to shut that one back off, and we're gonna finish still up. We only like two more on that side, and that, that whole drum screen will be done. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, you see all this stuff right here. That spot I was showing on the drum screen, that's where all that comes from in here and it chops it in the macerators right here and it sends it all the way up top up there in the liquid separators and chops and chews and spits it into a dumpster right there. That's the way it works. It does all the flowables, I mean, straight up, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, I've been working here going on 26 years. I've been working here ever since I was 18. My dad got me a job out here. He was working out here in like 82, 1982. And uh, he got me an interview and I've been, I come out here cutting grass and I, I went from uh, grass cutter labor to a uh, semi-skill to a maintenance mechanic one to a plant maintenance mechanic two. And that's what I am now until I retire. Hi, my name is Ann Cummy. I've been with the city for about 18 months. We work at Headwards to try and keep the city of Atlanta, the whole community, safe from hazardous waste. Did you ever think about what would happen when you flush your toilet and it didn't go anywhere? Or how about that sink that gets stopped up because maybe one of the pipes are clogged? Well, when that happens, imagine that happened 10,000 fold and this is what we have here. We take all of that away and get rid of it safely for you. I work in the electrical department. We work from anything with anything from 10 volts to 400 and, I'm sorry, 4,160 volts. We work with AC, we work with DC. We control the motors, we make them go, we make them stop, we make all the things happen, and our work is deadly and silent because you can't smell electricity, you can't see electricity, but it can give you one heck of a jolt and one heck of a bite. So our job is to keep not only the equipment working, but to keep our co-workers safe. We all work as a group here. Maintenance, along with electricity, Christians, along with techs, even the laborers, the operators, we all work together to keep Atlanta safe from hazardous waste fumes, because we do deal with methane, methane, which is explosive. So we try and make sure that every day you come home, you do come home to a safe environment. We love our jobs and we like working here and we like the fact that we are serving the public. So, that's us from Headworks. Cruise is filmed on location with the men and women of the City of Atlanta Department of Watershed Management. All work orders are mandatory until completed. Watershed's men and women work hard to provide clean, safe drinking water for our customers. 